Previously, I created information for the floors for the building. I also separated the walls from the floor and ceiling. And now we can work on the interior of the building, specifically the interior floors. To do this, I want to work with the floors which I created for the exterior walls, and I want to loop over these. Currently, all of our floors are specified by groups, and groups can be useful, but they're not particularly flexible. Attributes will usually give us far better control, so instead of just defining these floors by groups, I want to define them by attributes as well. So I'm going to edit the attribute wrangle node where I'm defining my floors. And after I've set the groups, I'm going to add an attribute. This will be an integer attribute. This attribute will be called floor number. I'll set this attribute with the floor value. So now if we look in our geometry spreadsheet under primitives, we should have a floor attribute which matches with the floor groups. And this attribute will be called floor number. I can then look at our output. And each of the primitives should now have a floor number. And this will actually allow us to organize our primitives based off the individual floors. I'll now work with the second for each primitive loop. And here I do not want to loop over the individual primitives. Instead, I want to loop over all of the floors. So I can look at the end of the loop. And here I'll activate single pass. And we should see a single primitive being shown. And this will be the first primitive which we're looping over. If I change the primitive that I'm looping over, we'll see that we do not actually have a very good order for these primitives. This is something which you can fix, but it's not something which I'm going to bother with now. What I want to do now is loop over the floors rather than the individual primitives. To do this, I'm going to activate a grayed out field, and this is called piece attribute. This attribute is going to be my floor number, and this will cause us to loop over all of the primitives which contain this attribute. And by doing this, I'll get all of the primitives for my floor zero. We can now loop over every single one of our floors, and we can work on each floor individually. Next, I'll get a group node, and I'll connect this within the for loop. Here, I'm going to be grouping edges. I'm going to activate include by edges. And in this case, I'm going to include the edges by edge length. Essentially, we want to set a minimum edge length of zero, and we want a maximum edge length, which is less than the height of our floor, which in this case is three. So we want this edge length to be less than three. This will give us a group of edges for the top and the bottom of each of the walls. After this, I'll get a line convert. I'll connect this after the group. Here we're going to run over the group which we have just created. Following this, I add an attribute wrangle node. Once again, I'll be looking for the center of the bounding box. I'll specify this with a vector, and this vector will be stored in the variable center. I'll set this with the get box center function, and I'll get my geometry from input zero. I'll then specify all the points which are above the center of this geometry. So the conditional will be if at p, and we'll specify the y axis with an index of one, and we'll test if this is greater than center, and we'll want the y value from center. So once again, the index will be one. So if the point is above the center of the primitive, we'll then remove the point, and we'll do this with the remove point function. We'll get the geometry from input zero, and we'll work on the current point width at pt num. This will give me a line section which contains the base of the walls, and we can fill these using the polyfill node. This will not work, and I get an error which says we do not have manifold geometry. So for the moment, I'm going to connect this after the loop. I then want to convert these curves into as few primitives as possible. So I'll get a polypath node. I'll connect this after the loop. And within this node, I'm going to activate connect endpoints, which essentially is going to fuse all of this geometry together. And now I should be generating floor geometry, and this floor geometry should be giving me a grid. So essentially, the polypath is going to convert each of these into a single primitive. This will give us two line primitives and will make it easier to work with the polyfill node. And since these are based off a grid, the polyfill node should give us a grid output. I'll move these two nodes back into the loop. I'll then select the end of the loop and I'll turn off single pass. I should now be generating interior floors for the entirety of the building. We should now be able to join these up with the existing floors, and this should give us both our interior and our exterior floors. So I'm going to start a branch from earlier in my network. I'll do this after the group delete node. I can then merge this with our existing group. However, in this case, we're merely duplicating geometry which we already have. And here we want to deal with the floor specifically. 
and do not want to deal with the walls. So I'm going to get a blast node to remove the walls. The group in the blast node will take our CDN and floor group. And here I'll delete the non-selected geometry. And this should get rid of all the walls. We should now have floors for every level of the building. And these should include both exterior and interior floors. With the floor and ceiling group, we have a set of floors which can be seen from the exterior of the building. And those floors that are not in this group are all interior floors. So I'll add a group after the for loop before we merge the floors together. And this group will be called interior floors. I'll then rename the floors and ceiling group to exterior floors. We do, however, have an issue in that all of the floors at the base of the building, these are the floors where we reverse the normals, are currently being duplicated. Essentially, we're generating these floors twice. So this is an issue which we will have to deal with. Before that, I'm just going to do some housekeeping. I'm going to change the way in which I'm naming the groups, and I'm going to use the node name to name the groups instead, as this will make the network easier to navigate. I'll then need to update all the nodes which are using this group, as these should no longer use floors and ceilings. Instead, they should use the exterior floors. With the convert line node, I'm generating a rest length attribute. I do not need this attribute, so I will deactivate this. So we have cleaned up the basic groups, but there are some attributes that I want to add to these floors. These are currently being applied to the walls, but certain of these attributes I want to apply to the floors as well. So I'll duplicate the for loop where I define the groups and attributes for the walls, and I'll connect this to the branch where I'm dealing with the exterior floors. This should lead to our floors being placed within the floor groups automatically. It should also add floor attributes to each floor. I should be able to visualize these attributes. I'll need to make sure that they're marker attributes and that they're displayed as text. And we should now be able to see the numbering for each floor. It will be tempting over here to add a blast node and to remove floor zero. This is not a good way to do this, however, as we cannot guarantee that the floor overlaps will be at floor zero, as we can have base floors at multiple heights depending on how we construct our building. For the moment, I'm going to take a very unsatisfactory approach to this, and this is not the best way of doing this, and I'll probably replace this very soon, but it is something which I will be doing in any case, even if I correct the base floor later. And that is, I'm going to attach a fuse node after I've merged the floors together, as I want each of these floors to be a single piece of geometry for the moment, and currently a lot of these floors are defined by two pieces of geometry. So this will clean up our geometry, as we should now no longer have doubled points. However, this will maintain our primitive groups. We have our exterior floor showing. We also have our interior floors. And the points which are part of both actually show up as part of both. These floors should now be able to be merged with the exterior walls. And this will give us an updated building which will have interior geometry and will have individual floors for each level of the building. So this will improve on our initial building setup and will give us more complete geometry as the basis for a building. There is still more geometry that we would want to add to this building before we start creating more geometry though, so we will need to continue adding information to the building.